get a competitive advantage in customer service as I talk to the authors, Lori Jo Vest and Marilyn Suttle of the hot new book on customer service called Taming Gladys. <laughs> Customer service is something we hear a lot about and we know it's important, but I've recently found a good book that personalizes it and gives a lot of practical information. And matter of fact, I got it here on my iPad. It's called Taming Gladys and it's a, a subsequent book to a great book on dealing with Gladys. And we're going to find out who is Gladys because we have right now joining us the two authors of this, Marilyn Suttle and Lori Jo Vinks. We're glad to have you both here. Thanks for being with us. Oh, thanks for having us. Thank you. And you're both up there in the Detroit area right now, so you've written the book up there, and we know that you've done a lot on this. What I want to do is I want to share this with the people that are joining us right now, what the two of you have done. Now, this is packed full with a lot. And matter of fact, for those of you that are joining us, we're going to use the wonders of technology and get a chance for you to actually see this on the screen, because what I'm going to do here is go through and with a few taps of the keys, we can make sure that it's on the screen, and you're seeing it now on your computer screen there, Taming Gladys by Marilyn Suttle, Lori Jo Vest, and this is the Busy Leader's Guide to Creating Fierce Customer Loyalty. I love that word, uh, fierce customer loyalty. And I want to show some uh, examples throughout the book here of what's available as we go to different places. Like, for instance, if I go up here to page, oh, let's go to page 40, for instance, right now, and I want to come back here to 39 and see what it is. There's a great quote here, and I'm going to flip it over here this way so you can see it even a little bit better. There are that service heroes strive to exceed the customer expectations. I like that. The customer's expectation, whatever they're looking for, you go for a little bit more. And I love the concept that they talk about going the extra mile to strengthen your customer relationships and keep them coming back. Select a strategy to deliver something extra and take action and measure your results. Now, notice something as we go through this. This is on week number five right here. Week number five, this book is set up for those of you that are working with teams and you've got maybe a Monday morning or a Tuesday morning a weekly sales meeting or gathering. Every week you can go through and have one salient point that is discussed to really help people. And matter of fact, what we're going to do, I'm going to take advantage of Lori Jo Vest being here with us right now. Because Lori Jo, you're here and you talk about a story that you have where you and your husband, you eat out regularly, you went to a place and you said you used to frequent a popular eatery that's focused on bread. Well, I'm interested in what you've got to say on that. What happened with it? It was a fascinating story in the book itself. Tell us about what happened, why you went to the place, why you kind of leaned away, and, well, what happened later on that? Well, we had, uh, you know, we're busy people. We're both entrepreneurs. We're constantly, you know, working late hours and working after hours, and there's a lot of times when we don't have time to cook or we're out at a meeting and have to stop on the way. So we're really good customers of a good quick sit down restaurant. And this particular place was, uh, it's a, a popular chain that we've all heard of. And it was located right near our house. I mean, literally five minutes away. So we went there on a regular basis. And over time, we started to notice that the lines were really long. Like you'd, mm. you'd go in at dinner time and the line would be literally out the door. Um, you'd notice that the tables weren't cleaned off. They weren't, you know, you'd go there and you'd have your tray and you'd go to sit down and there wasn't a table that had been cleaned. And we started to drift away from it and eventually stopped going all together for five years because of the slow service, the dirty tables, little, little nuances of service that some people may be able to overlook, but to go back to the same place again and again and have to contend with those things, we chose not to. So five years, they lost our business. And then out of the blue one day, we, you know, we were driving by on the way to somewhere else and, well, let's give them another try and see what happens. And so we, we went in and the food was always good from even the beginning when the service was bad, the food was good. So we thought, well, let's go in. We went in and we got our, the line was short and we sat down. The table was clean. It was, it was kind of like, wow, this is different. And toward the end of our meal, a woman walked over with a tray of chocolate chip cookies that she'd just taken out of the oven. They were little, they were nice little cookies, not too big, you know. And uh, she walked over to the table and offered them to my husband and I, and it was like, wow, this is really nice. Really got that warm, fuzzy feeling going that, that you want your customers to have. And we, a couple of weeks later, we went back. And then we went back again. And we kept noticing more of those little touches. And I'll, I'll tell you, we're weekly there now. I'm a member of their, you know, their 
club, whatever it is, where you sign in with your phone number and you get points and all that. Um, they have since evolved their menu. They're really listening to what customers are saying. And they're revolving their menu to be more organic. The service is amazing. They've added order at your table. I mean, I've watched this restaurant go from, you know, dirty tables and slow service to doing things that other restaurants aren't doing. Very innovative. And some of those aren't even in the book because they're things that I just noticed over the last couple of months. Yeah, well, it sounds like they made a major improvement in what they did. And I think that's particularly good. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to go back here to the book. One of the things that you shared that I particularly liked with this was uh, what you talked about uh, at the end that it has some real nice capabilities here. Matter of fact, over here on a page, let me get this up here. Uh, at the end, you say, this, uh, in the last three months, we've been back five or six times. Not only have they managed the small basic necessities, clean tables, good service, they've added extras and made it an even more pleasurable experience. And I like this part right here. This story points to the benefits of surveying your customers, even having someone secret shop your business. If you don't, you risk not knowing about all the little things that can add up to a lost customer. Marilyn, you have done some work in this area, and I know you do a lot of training and helping customers on this. Tell us a little bit about the, the benefits of that, doing the secret shop in ways that they can survey customers. Oh, you know, that is so important, that secret shop. Even if you were to walk through your business as if you had no ties to it whatsoever, and you just walk through and ask yourself, what would make my employees want to get up in the morning and come here? What would make my customers want to be here? And what wouldn't? You know, you start to see all the little touch points that make a difference. And asking questions, getting that feedback is crucial. Just like Lori was saying, you know, um, obviously she left that, that business for five years. How many other customers left too? And so, if you want to bring them back or if you want to keep them coming back, you need to tap into what they're thinking. Ask them questions. Survey monkeys for some companies. Others is just to simply ask, how could we make our service even better next time? And that's a real key question, even better, because people don't want to tell you that they don't like something. Most people, I mean, some love to complain, but most people don't want to be uncomfortable. And giving feedback can be really uncomfortable. So the more you can make it comfortable for people to tell you the truth, the more you'll learn. Hey, yeah, Marilyn? that's a very good point. I yeah. like it. Lori Joe. I've got a quick, um, Marilyn has actually used the secret shopper technique to do service training. Can oh, you tell us right. about the library? I don't mean to jump in, Terry, but. Oh, no, that's good. I want to hear, I'm going to go back and forth. This is just us talking here. <laughs> so you so you tell us about a, that. She used it as a training tool with a library. Marilyn, tell us about that one. That is oh, such right. So we spent a year working on a customer service culture change for a major library, you know, very large library. Uh, one of those mega libraries that has a big auditorium and all that stuff in it. And um, we, I had them, about 100 employees, in, and I gave them a secret shopper activity. I had them go to other libraries, either call or go in person and be a Gladys or be, the, be a little bit annoying, maybe be a little, ask for something a little bit more than they, they should, just to see what it would be like. What How is service different there? And what a shocking discovery they had. Some of them learned how to do service a lot better than they were doing it. Some of them learned, oh my gosh, I can't believe they treated me like that. You know, and so, but they all came back and they shared their experiences. And it was like, you couldn't have learned from taking a class what they learned from that secret shopper experience because they saw the mistakes, they saw the touch points that, that, and they realized, wow, when I'm on the phone, I can make a big difference if I did this and not that. Yeah. Uh, so it's very powerful. Very practical and very powerful information. I think that's good. And also, that's something I wanted to talk about as well. Both of you talk about Gladys and taming Gladys. And I know people have asked about that. I love the way you talk about it in your book. Uh, I'd like to hear from both of you on who is Gladys and who's your Gladys. Lori Joe, we'll start with you. Well, Gladys was an actual customer of one of the companies that's in the book, our first book called Who's Your Gladys? Um, Gladys was a customer of a moving company. She was elderly. She was moving out of her home that she'd been in for decades into a senior care center. And she was not happy about it. She was miserable for so many reasons. And the moving company that we interviewed, professional movers in Wixom, Michigan, is that where they are, Marilyn? Uh, Wild Lake. Wild Lake, Michigan. And they had actually treated this Gladys, even though she was probably never going to move again. It's probably the last move of her life. They treated her like a queen. They treated her really, really well. 
um, something happened during the move as as often does when you have a customer that's unhappy, um, they broke her marble table and they went above and beyond what you would expect from a moving company in trying to repair it. Gladys still wasn't happy. So they fixed it. it you know, they, they went back and said the only way they're actually going to make this right with her is to buy her a brand new marble table similar to the one she had. So they spent time, energy, money, um, making Gladys happy. And as a result, they ended up being the biggest uh, mover into and out of one of the largest senior communities in Metro Detroit. And Very nice. a lot of companies wouldn't understand that that Gladys, you know, she was a difficult customer, but once you get a difficult customer convinced that you got, you, you've got their best interests in mind, they become an advocate and a source of referrals that just, you know, can get you all kinds of business. So yeah. it's a very long sighted view of, uh, and to take a Gladys and turn them into an advocate is not as hard as some people would think, or that's, that's what Marilyn and I have discovered. Yeah, right. I like the way you say that. We're taking something that could be a negative in companies, whatever company it is, you're going to have some oh whoops that happen. Things mm -hmm. happen in a moving company, yeah, it's going to be breaking. Whereas if you're an accountant or maybe a dentist or a doctor or a professional speaker, something could go wrong. That gives you an opportunity, it seems, to uh, build on top of that. Marilyn, let's uh, have you uh, talk your ideas. I'm interested in what you have to say. And building on that, I'm particularly interested in how that relates in the day of the internet, in the day of social media and mobility. How does um, taking care of your Gladys and Taming Gladys relate in that era? So we all have a different Gladys, the different types. Uh, we all have the trigger points that cause us to have that pit of our stomach you know, pounding. <laughs> and, and when it comes to social media, Gladys loves to leave reviews. You know, she'll, she will, if she's not happy, she's going to let people know about it on Twitter, Facebook, on Yelp, and all of the review sites. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, we did a lot of interviewing. We interviewed... Uh, what for a year and a half or so uh, for our first book and you know the best of the best in service and we found one fantastic example of um, a woman who handles bad reviews brilliantly that any business person could do so if you get a bad review let's say on Yelp your Gladys is very angry she didn't tell you but she's telling the rest of the world which tends to be what happens you can go in as a business owner and comment um, privately without knowing who she is so you can go in, and this is what, what she does. It, this was for a spa. She, um, the lady was not happy. She was very unhappy, just wrote a terrible review. And the owner wrote, oh, I'm so sorry you experienced this. We want to make this right. So we would like to have you secret shop for us. We'll give you a, a page of things to, to rate us on. Because people who review online tend to have this desire to judge. You know, it's just the way it goes. And she has a seven page form with all the points of service. This woman came back and changed her review. She had such a great experience. She got to try a new service, which is a fantastic opportunity to have her continue to pay for that service. And she wrote, she changed the review without even being asked and said, I had no idea how many points of contact this company does to make my experience good. They turned everything around, you must go to this spa. And that happened because she didn't get upset or scared from the negative review, but she responded to it. And that's so key, how you respond. It's not just to a difficult customer, but the whole world is watching. So it really calls for what Lori and I call emotion management. Yes, I like that. That motion management is something that you talk about a lot in the book. And I think for those of you that are watching this, that's something you want to pay attention to. And that's why I really like the book, the way that they put it together, that it's in bite-sized pieces. It's something you can use on a weekly basis. So you say you don't have to try to grab everything all at once. Matter of fact, we don't do it as well. But if every week you're getting a touch point, something you learn about in managing your emotions and how to handle it in the stories that are there, I think it would be real good. Well, matter of fact, I want to go back to the book here and share something. As I was going through this, I was highlighting a lot of it and uh, saying, hey, I really like this part of it. And uh, I wanted to see, you know, so many different areas of it that were really helpful. I find that, uh, that uh, there were some uh, really good gems here. Here's one that I want. Matter of fact, I want to get the comments from both of you on this. When you talk about maintaining relationships with customers who have purchased from you is productive since it will help you to stay top of mind for future business. Boy, that's important in a day when on the internet, we're always cluttered with so many other information. So much information, so many choices. Staying in touch 
generates referrals and repeat business that can keep sales going during economic downturns. And this particularly right here, now this is where we want to get nitty gritty. Here's something for those of you that are watching this, you're going to like this because we're going to find out some ways you can do this to create a system to keep in touch with customers, maintain regular monthly contact through email, events, scheduled calls every few months, send helpful articles and useful information, not sales messages. Boy, that's important. Remember, you're creating a relationship. That's something real important. Most of you that know me know I talk about relationship marketing and how important that is. Not trying to make a quick sale. The effort you put into maintaining long-term relationships will pay off. We could go for a full two or three day seminar on something like that, but we don't have a two or three seminar right here. So what I'm going to do is ask each of you in, a, in an executive summary, kind of elaborate that and talk about some of the systems, ideal systems and get really nitty gritty. Maybe what you're using, what technologies you use to stay in touch. Marilyn, we'll start with you this time. Tell us about some of the systems and how you create that. You know, something really simple is using LinkedIn. LinkedIn will tell you whenever your clients are having an anniversary, whenever they're in the news, you get a, a, a feed. So what part of the system is to look through weekly and respond and say, hey, congratulations on your you know 15th anniversary of your business. Um, you know, just something that simple. It doesn't have to be a complex system. As a matter of fact, sometimes the simple things make the biggest difference. Like um, uh, Brian Lee is a, a mutual friend of ours from NSA, a speaker, mm -hmm. and he was in our first book. And he literally makes a phone call on people's birthdays. I get a phone call every year on my birthday oh, from him. Nice. <laughs> it's something simple. You wouldn't think it's a big deal, but it feels good. And it's all about, you know, people make decisions based on their feelings and then use logic to justify the feeling. So yes, they do. create the feeling of I belong here. That makes a huge difference. Yeah, I think so. Lori Jo? Well, there's a lot of different ways. I spend a lot of time, a lot of my time in sales and companies of all different sizes, being in regular contact with as many of those customers and former customers as you can is really important. One way to do that is to get emails and do regular monthly email blast. Um, and it can be something as simple as some business tips. Um, I, one of the companies I worked for in the past, we used to do a goofy little contest on the bottom to compel people to read it. Be one of the first five people to tell us what you're going to be for Halloween, and we'll send you a $25 gift card to Target to buy your candy to give out this year. You know, we do little goofy things like that every month. And so they knew they were looking forward to seeing what, what we were going to give away next. And then we found out that some of our best clients were really excited to get that email so they could answer and respond to that question at the bottom. And then the other thing we did was we had every, you know, this was part of the sales team's responsibility, but it can be part of your project managers or anybody that works with a customer to keep track of um, uh, the owner of the company or somebody high up the, the food chain at the company to make a personal call to those clients that are your regulars, the ones that come in the door all the time. Um, they're regular, they're loyal, but sometimes they, because they're there all the time, they can start to feel like family and they, we treat them a little less special. They feel a little less special. Getting a, a quarterly call from the CEO of the company or the head of the department can make a huge difference in how important they feel to you and people love to feel important. Yeah. So one way, one of the points of that system is to make sure that your customers feel that you understand how important they are to your business. Yeah, I think that's important in an age of internet, uh, email, and Facebook. There's a place for all of these and text messages, which sometimes can be a little bit impersonal. Nevertheless, that picking up the phone and saying, hi, how you doing? Hey, thank you for being a customer. Yeah. Really can make a big difference in uh, what we are. We're human beings. And, and the other thing I would have the, oops, I'm sorry. I would have the owner ask, how are we doing? Ooh. Are we taking good care of you? you know, are, we, are you doing good? And so that they know that the people at the very top are interested and how they are perceiving the service and the company's products. Very important. How are we doing those how's going calls? I remember yeah. how's things. I remember Winston Marsh, a marketing guru over in Australia, uh, I work with, talks about that, having a how's things call every so often to do Love that. that. And those are really important. Well, more, we could go on for hours. And matter of fact, I know you actually can do that for people and you mm -hmm. do it also. I'm not going to let the two of you get away without finding out how people can get in touch with you. If they want to get in touch with you, what is the best way for them to do that? Lori Jo, start with you. Well, we've got a website at uh, www.whosyourgladdest.com. 
you can always get in touch with us there. We're also both on LinkedIn. You can get a hold of us there. We do have a contact button with our phone numbers on our website. And give us those um, phone numbers all real slowly because there might be people from around the world calling on this. So they would, of course, put the plus one in there to reach the United States before, but uh, in the U.S., they'll call, what's the uh, area coded number for both of you? For me, it's 313-909-3062. And for Marilyn, it's 248-348-1023. Very good. And again, that website, for those that will be listening on audio, please, uh, Marilyn, spell that website out for us real slowly for those that might not be native English speakers and they want to put it down there. We're going to try to get this on the screen also in a subtitle here, but please spell that out for us. All right. It's www.whosyourgladys.com. Very good. So Who's Your Gladys? A great book. And for, seriously, for those of you that want to get ahead, you want a competitive advantage, this is a book that don't tell my competitors about it, okay? I don't want them to know because this is a good one. You'll want to get this and you won't want to tell your competitors about it, but it's a great book that shows not only the emotion, connecting with that, which is so important. I love the places where I talk about how to handle that when the customer really is wrong, but you want to treat them right. They talk about how to handle that one. That, that alone is worth buying the book. You can get that and uh, available at fine stores everywhere. I think I got mine off Amazon. It's available on Amazon, right? It's on, yes, it's on Amazon. And, you know, we, we're really excited about giving busy leaders a way to uh, sprinkle in lessons. It's wonderful to take training, and it's important. But what happens between trainings? And, you know, we have live trainings, we have online trainings, but in between, at your weekly meetings, you can reinforce. When you take your eye off service, service reverts back. So this gives you something to, you don't have to think, you grab the book, you use it in the meeting, and it's amazing. We actually piloted it with a bunch of companies, and hearing the changes that were taking place was really exciting. Excellent. Well, yeah, and for those of you watching it, this is a good way for you to get a competitive advantage. The book is uh, Taming Gladys, Lori Jo Vest, and Marilyn Suttle are the authors joining us today. Ladies, thank you so much for being with us today. Thank you, Terry. We really appreciate you having us. Thank well, you so glad much, glad to have Terry. Uh, you both here and looking forward to hearing from you watching it. Let us know your comments. We want to hear from you. I'm, of course, at terrybrock.com, and you can drop me a note and let me know what you think. But we'll look forward to hearing from you. Thanks for being with us today.